Web accessibility is a hot topic in the L&D world today, as it always should have been, let's be honest. So I thought I'd go through some easy things we can all do to start adjusting our content. In this series, we're looking at various WACAG standards and we're starting with the famous 1.4.1, 1.4.3. That's it, we're talking about use of color and contrast. So a great place to start when we're talking about accessibility and specifically with the with the WACAG standards is that we should have been here a long time ago. These standards are not new, they have been around for a long time, both in their original format and in the revisions since then. And in fact, we're looking at a fairly new set of revisions in the not immediate future, but coming up in the next couple of years. There are technical difficulties and considerations currently being ironed out, but the, the WACAG 3.0 standards are openly available, um, though not yet finished. So during these episodes, I'm gonna really focus on the 2.1 standards, uh, and specifically, we're gonna be looking uh, in each episode at a standard or a couple of different standards that kind of relate to each other, the success criteria within them, and then practically how we as learning designers, uh, e-learning creators, developers, whatever whatever catchphrase we're giving to ourselves this week, um, how we can implement that and what tools are available. And uh, the simple fact is that most of it's going to cost you nothing at all except a little bit of your time. So uh, there is no excuse for not implementing this stuff if you don't already. So I thought a really great place to start would be with two of, I think, the easiest fixes around. And that's uh, two success criteria in the very first section uh, of the WACAG standards, uh, which is about making your content uh, perceivable to people, basically meaning they can, they can see it, um, which is super basic, but overlook this, let's face it, nothing else really matters. So we're gonna be looking at Again, two success criteria in this video, 1.4.1, I just catch you already, right? Uh, and that's the use of color. And 1.4.3, which is about contrast minimums, the minimum contrast you can have between different things on the screen. So let's start with use of color. Use of colour is probably the best defined of all the WACAG standards because it's really freaking simple. Basically, colour is not universally perceivable. Some people are colour blind, some people are unable to distinguish between certain colours depending on shade and situation, some colours do not display on certain devices, some people may only have a black and white monitor. And therefore, put simply, you cannot rely on colour alone to make information perceivable. Example, making something red, to me and you might tell me, oh, that's incorrect because I just selected it and it's telling me it's incorrect by turning it red and turning the other one green. Great. What if you can't see red or green? What if you're using a black and white screen? Now you've just got different shades of grey or potentially nothing at all because you're using a, a completely set, say an e-ink screen that is literally black or nothing and that's it. This is really simple. You can never use colour alone to tell someone about something. So when we're talking about um, completion states, things being locked, uh, things being correct or incorrect, we need to give something clear and visually perceivable to everyone, whether that's a tick and a cross as well as the colours, whether that's writing incorrect or correct, whether that's putting complete, incomplete or nothing if they haven't started it yet, whether that's adding a little padlock icon rather than just greying a button out. These things are super, super simple and an easy fix to immediately cross that off and say yes, our use of colour is in line with WACAG 2.1. Now, let's move on to 1.4.3 and contrast minimums. Here, things get a little bit more complicated, but we can still easily overcome those challenges. So, contrast minimums. 
Here we are literally talking about the contrast that text has um, on a background or on what it's in and there are a couple of different standards laid out between AA and AAA and based on the kind of text we're talking about. So the main kinds of text to be talking about are normal body text where the quote unquote standard rules apply, large text which is identified as anything 14 and upward. Um, so those are your, your titles, headings, things like that usually fall into that category. Incidental text. Now this is text um, or a, an image potentially uh, that is non-essential, non-accessible, part of a UI that no one can use at the moment or is actually invisible to everyone and is meant to be that way. And actually that's one of the exceptions to these contrast rules. There's no contrast requirement if the text doesn't actually need to be seen anyway. We've got logo types. So this is text within a logo. Uh, and again, there are no contrast rules around text in a logo. No rules, but I would ask you this. If you want your logo to be perceivable, apply the contrast rules. If you don't want your logo to be perceivable, why is it on the screen? It's a different debate, but it's worth thinking about. And finally, there is text within an image or a representation of text within an image. Uh, this could be uh, tables, diagrams, uh, labels within images, situations where you can't avoid text being inside an image. As we know, obviously, that's not ideal in of itself. So why do we have these rules? Put simply, all the contrast ratios, whether it's AA, AAA, and for each of these different categories, were decided upon with the view to take someone who has limited or low levels of vision and ensure that they are able to perceive the content. Now, this does not take into account those who are, let's say, legally blind. Um, so there are some limitations to this specific standard, but there are other standards to help in those situations as well. So this is just looking at those of limited vision and this is just setting that minimum standard to say this contrast ratio ensures that people in the in the broadest possible uh, situation within this catchment of down to low vision will be able to perceive and read this text. So let's take a look at what those contrast ratios are. So let's start where we said we were going to look, and that's 1.4.3, which are contrast minimums. So this is a double A standard. So to ensure your, your content is aligned to the WCAG double A's, this is like the minimum requirement you're able to uh, quote unquote get away with. But really, you should be saying this is the minimum we're willing to produce. And what that means is that your body text will have a contrast ratio of 4.5 to one. Now this works, you know, whether you've got a ratio of, I don't know, butter to sugar while uh, while baking, whether that's a, that's a lot of sugar to butter, um, or you know, whatever you might, parts fuel if you're mixing for a two stroke or a four stroke engine, if, I don't know, that, I assume that's a fairly universal reference, but whatever you might mix, whether it's, I don't know, uh, wine and lemonade, uh, fuels and oils, or, uh, or baking goods, um, ratios are literally a, a measurement assuming one standardized in this case the background color being one uh, and your your text color being uh, 4.5 times in terms of contrast against it now that's for body text and you should apply that wherever there are quantities of text that you expect someone to read and go through and it contains content and therefore you should also be applying this standard to um, situations where you've got text within images uh, and body text in text boxes now when you're looking at uh, what we discussed before, uh, which is large text, uh, and I said before large text is kind of 14 plus, there is a caveat to that. It's 14 plus if the text is bold. If the text is not bold, then it's 18 plus. Um, now there are some fonts where that doesn't apply. They tend to be either particularly thin or particularly you know, fancy fonts. Um, the idea that one font is inherently more accessible than another is not really the case. And there's, there's lots of content out there to explain that. Um, I'm not a font expert, but as a basic rule, 
14 and bold upwards, large text, or 18 not bold upwards, large text. And when using large text, you can use a slightly lower contrast ratio of three to one. And that just represents the difference in the, you know, the physical size of text, making it more legible. Now, I'm sure we're all thinking the same thing. How do I look at text and go, ah, yes, well, that clearly has a contrast ratio of, insert clever mathematics here. Um, obviously, maybe, maybe you can do that, in which case, wow. But also, don't waste your time doing that. Focus that incredible brain on something else. There are loads of free uh, checkers out there that you can use, just free things online. I highly recommend two. One by WebAIM, their accessibility checker is fantastic. You can put the colors in, um, you can even put the, the text specifically in, um, and then it will not only tell you what the contrast ratio is, but tell you whether or not it meets the WACAG AA or even AAA, which we'll go on to in a moment, standards. Um, that's really, really helpful. There's also an excellent tool if you're able to use kind of um, website-esque URLs to assess your content. Uh, and it also works really well if you're wanting to take ideas from web examples, like you've seen a website and you think, wow, there are some elements there that would make for an amazing uh, e-learning example or a, a, a website-based piece of e-learning. Why not? If you're using a tool like Evolve, you could take your um, preview link and, uh, and pop that over to this. Uh, and that is called Wave. Um, and that's a, 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 an API based solution. Uh, you do have to sign up for an account, but you get like 100 credits for free. So 100 pages you can check and it gives a full report on accessibility of the URL that you input. There's also a uh, Firefox uh, plugin extension that you can then use and go to a website and just hit the extension and it'll, it'll report for you. Um, Obviously that means going there and spending the time on the page, but that may be worth it if you don't want to go down the line of using their API directly and setting up an account and all that kind of thing. So those are two tools that can very quickly allow you to identify what the contrast is and then adjust accordingly before having to go and change your actual module. However, I would really encourage you to do these kinds of checks at the storyboarding phase so that you're not building and rebuilding and changing as you go, because that is, as we all know, frustrating, especially in uh, more complex tools such as uh, Storyline and, and Captivate, where you might be building things on multiple layers from scratch. So next up, I mentioned that there were a second set of standards, the AAA standards, and this actually falls under a different success criteria, 1.4.6, or contrast enhanced. It sounds, uh, it's a enhance and zoom in, um, but sadly that's not, we're not there yet in terms of technology, one day, one day. Um, but the standards shift slightly if you want to attain that triple A when it comes to contrast. Now there are other areas in the learning world where AAA is difficult because of the technology we use but here it's perfectly doable all that happens is you apply a higher level of contrast the definitions don't change just the ratios so for our standard ratio whereas we were at 4.5 to 1 we're now at 7 to 1 a 7 to 1 ratio for all body text as for large text, we step that up to where we were for body text before at 4.5 to 1. Exactly the same definition though, so 14 and bold upwards or 18 and upwards without being bold. Dead simple. You can use the same tools to check it. There are even contrast checking tools in things like Adobe Color. I mean, there, there are tons of tons of sites out there. These couple of rules about the use of color 1.4.1, minimum contrast 1.4.3, and enhanced contrast 1.4.6 are, I think, three really quick wins for every e-learning designer, web designer, uh, anyone creating digital content. Also think about how you can apply this to non-digital content. Think about you know, things that are really popular at the moment, like infographics, where quite often we see these patterned backgrounds with text sat on top of them. Consider how accessible they are in terms of use of color and in terms of the contrast behind that text. 
If people cannot read your content, it doesn't matter how pretty it is, it doesn't matter how clever it was in terms of development and design, it is entirely useless to them. Take the time, get to know these standards and apply these quick wins. I hope you found this video useful. Uh, I'm sure many of you already know about these standards and as this series progresses, I want to slowly look at the entire list of WACAG AA and AAA standards and how they apply to learning design. If there's any you'd particularly like to hear about, please do let me know down in the comments. Give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and of course, if you didn't enjoy this video, hit that dislike button, let me know why, and be sure to watch the video back at 75% speed.